Hey, and welcome to Fit Me to Rock Fitness Podcast, a podcast for people who want to get no BS information about fitness and know that fitness is about so much more than losing scale weight. It's about feeling confident in your skin and empowered in your life. I'm your host, Tura Virta, personal trainer, strength and nutrition coach, and most of all, a husband of my beautiful wife, Miriam. Each week, my guests and me will give you some no BS fitness tips and motivate you to take action in your own personal fitness journey as we talk about nutrition, exercise, mindset, personal development, and executing in life with enjoyable but still effective strategies. If your goal is to look better, feel, and be strong, and experience transformation from inside out, you, my friend, are in the right place. Thank you for jumping in, and now let's jump into today's episode. Hey, and welcome to this uh, Fit Me Tour of Fitness podcast. In today's episode, I'm talking my top five strategies for your rest days, for your rest days and uh, recovery. So uh, before going into this topic, uh, uh, I just want to remind you uh, that I'm not uh, putting any ads on this uh, episode. And the only way I'm uh, promoting this uh, is uh, through uh, you. So if you could leave a five-star review and uh, share this show, as this is the only way how I get uh, more people listen to this episode. And uh, as that, is, uh, that is obviously my goal that uh, more people are getting this. So uh, getting this information available. And if you find it helpful, I would really appreciate you sharing or leaving a review for this show. So, uh, but... For this today's topic, what we are going to talk a little bit later, this is something what I learned hard way in my uh, 30s when I was uh, playing, and uh, I was always thinking that uh, that um, uh, more is uh, better and uh, and a good workout that you have to work out really hard, and uh, more you can do, more exhausted you are, more progress you are going to see, and uh, that was during the time I was playing professionally ice hockey and. Uh, and now as a coach, as a little bit more experienced, I don't say old, but more experienced uh, uh, human being and a coach, I I can only say that uh, how wrong I was at the time. And, uh, and uh, in this episode, uh, I'm providing you five uh, most beneficial strategies on your rest days as uh, sometimes uh, or often more is not better when it comes to your workouts as a uh, as, uh, it's uh, always, it depends a little bit on uh, how much uh, experience you have, what is your background, what is the right amount. So uh, especially for uh, beginners who are just uh, starting like two, three times per week is the kind of sweet spot where you have to be to get actually the most beneficial outcome and most benefits of uh, training. So if you are someone who is used to work out maybe five, six times a week. Uh, in this episode, you will learn strategies, how to improve it and what kind of things you could be doing. So um, uh, if you are obviously, if you are a professional athlete, uh, there is also some nuggets what you could be using in your in your work, in your workouts and recovery. So uh, let's get into episode. So First of all, what I hear often is that uh, when you have a rest day, it means that you are basically doing nothing. And uh, that is, I used to be that person too, that who had a rest day, it was on Sunday on the couch and not doing anything. And that was actually, that is the, probably the worst thing what you can do for your recovery to do nothing. And uh, especially in the days, like if you are very sore or something, and you really feel your workouts to do nothing, that is not the best possible strategy. And, uh, and uh, but like I said, these are all mistakes I had to learn hard way. And uh, I had to learn it uh, through my own experience, but also from my from my clients. So what is the best way to recover? I, I always love this story. When uh, one of my coaches said when I when we were we had a hard workout and uh, and the next day we had to repeat it and we had to work out again and uh, he said that uh, that soreness is going away how it came so uh, it's kind of true but there is a little bit uh, nuance for it so so how what it what it then means so basically the best tip 
to remove soreness uh, is to stay active. So what is the what is the best way how how it can like obviously i don't mean that you have to do a really hard workout if you are sore but uh, staying active like uh, walking and uh, some other low intensity cardio that's that's the probably the best way and what i mean with the low intensity cardio it uh, it's uh, if you think what is your maximum heart rate heart rate it's around 60 70% of your um uh, maximum heart rate and if you don't know what it is it's a uh, very individual but in general you can count it it's a uh, 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 220 or 221 minus your age so i'm 42 so for me it, technically it would be my heart rate would be somewhere around uh, 175 uh, 180 but uh, that is uh, that is that is my maximum heart rate and that would be then 60 from that or 70 percent from that i would get it would be my heart rate would be somewhere like 110 115 but um, if i look my my heart rate i have a uh, uh, my heart rate uh, is very low it have always been like for example i was uh, under 18 uh, we did a maximum heart rate test and uh, my maximum heart rate was uh, around 170 175 and now i'm um, that's uh, 25 years ago so my maximum heart rate is somewhere if i have a really hard workout i barely get get it ever over 160 so if i start to count my 60 70 percent uh, heart rate that that is then somewhere like i'm i'm around 90 95 100 somewhere there and uh, that is my kind of uh, uh, heart rate what i'm aiming for and uh, uh but that is uh, like if you don't know what is your maximum heart rate it's a very good and general recommendation is is uh 220 minus your age so that is pretty close and uh, and uh that is uh what your heart rate should be so for me for example that heart rate is uh rapid fast walking so walking it's uh it improves still your cask cardiovascular health uh, especially for my mental health and uh, you could be doing that uh, if you are working in your lunch breaks or or simply just a uh, normal task like uh, choosing uh, stairs over elevators so those are kind of simple things you could be doing uh, then uh, strategy number two is uh, probably uh, exercising but not like in a way like you think that if you go to gym or lift weights uh, that you should be lifting uh, heavier weights no it's it's basically just a body weight exercise so uh it's it's those are in your rest days it's uh, it's if especially if your goal is to get stronger build muscle it's um, it's to uh send those signals muscle building signals that your body knows what your body should be doing because obviously this is a some topic like that if you if your body more it gets those signals it's uh it's more effective it will be to building muscle and uh, this is not that you are not going to like if if your main workouts you are clo going close to failure in these body weight workouts it's uh it's you don't need to go close to failure it's just basically a reminder for your body what you are trying to do and uh it's uh, also what I like to use these kind of uh, days. It's, uh, for example, working with a full range of motion, meaning like that you would be learning to improving your form, like doing body weight squats. If you use with the heavier weights, like I'm, I'm uh, guilty of this doing too. Like if I'm lifting weights, I'm not going as deep as I could go. If I do body weight exercises, I can go as deep as I can. So you are improving and same thing with the, for example shoulder presses bench presses push-ups that you you are doing this uh, really with the maximum range of motion so uh, you get basically two benefits of uh, doing it and uh, and uh, uh, other thing what i what, why it is body weight because i i used to be a person who who, who was always thinking that uh, body weight exercise is that it's not worth of doing it because it it's not that hard or it doesn't you don't feel like that you have done a workout or anything but uh, there is there is uh, so many benefits and if you start to implement this uh, you are you are going to be surprised how much more progress because it's uh, like i said this is uh, for example for soreness it's uh, staying active doing this type of uh, exercises so if you 
did heavy squats day before next day you are doing just the body weight squats uh, you are you might think that this doesn't bring anything that i need to be lifting heavier weights but uh opposite the truth is uh, totally opposite so just the uh two 10 15 minute workouts you, it could be longer too but uh, i personally like to stick with the around 10 15 minute workouts for sending those uh, uh, muscle building signals to your body uh then tip number three is uh, something what i didn't even know when i was a younger and uh and now i can't imagine to live without and that is uh, that is a uh, mobility workouts so that is uh, it's kind of related with the body weight exercises so uh mobility training is something where you are what is uh, especially older you are getting it's the key to not have uh, pain acquis, uh, and uh, and uh, issues with your joints or or overall with your body so this is how it's helping then for example in your exercises uh, greater that the range of motion is uh, better you are going to more progress you are going to see less pain you will have and uh, mobility training is like a uh, i uh, it depends on phase how i do it personally like uh, i at this point i don't take uh, time for mobility workouts depending on exercise program i'm following there might be periods or workout programs or phases that i uh, take one special day for just for mobility exercises but these are mobility exercises are something what i involve every, every single day or several times per week i can and good understanding that mobility training you don't need to work out for an hour just for mobility that is a very long mobility training but if you take let's say uh one to ten minutes every single day or you're working on your mobility that is a, that is already a good workout because uh, for mobility it's not about uh, like getting perfect workout in it's more what is what matters more is that you are doing it consistently so how i implement this uh, mobility training at the moment like when i uh, for example at the moment um, i'm lacking a little bit time with my strength training and i try to maintain two maximum three times per week shorter workout sessions so i include this uh, into my warm-ups into my cool downs and uh, doing especially for those areas i struggle uh, with my mobility like i personally have issues a little bit with my wrist mobility with my shoulder mobility and uh, my other hip so those three areas where i'm focusing on and uh, these were like kind of surprises for me to figure out where i'm uh, where i'm struggling i wasn't even aware of my wrist injuries of course i understood i i learned that uh, there were some exercises that i had a wrist pain i couldn't perform them as well as i could and then when i did uh, mobility tests my self tests what i what i did um, what i have created like full mobility guide for my members in my balanced uh, uh, lifestyle uh, blueprint that's a uh, my membership program and uh, of course that is that is those tools are available of course for my one-on-one -on -one clients too but uh, there when i did those tests and uh, uh, i figured out that those are three areas i really need to work on and uh, now i'm trying to implement those exercises for my warm-ups cool downs and uh, even if i have a longer rest time during the rest time i might do one two mobility exercises so there is a there is always that you don't need to dedicate a full workout for for mobility sessions but you can do them within your workout so and like i said one to ten minutes is a great mobility workout and that uh, i can't emphasize uh, too much how important it is to get not to get to know if you are struggling because that is something like that you it's very hard to know if you are struggling you might be uh, having some let's say you have a uh, lower back pain often the, the, that pain or knee pain uh, those pain there is often the problem is not in your knee or in your back or you have lifted something wrong of course that could be the reason too but uh, more often than not i have seen the three the, the real underlying issue is coming from somewhere else for example 
uh, knee pain is often coming uh, from lack of your mobility, uh, lack of range of motion from your ankles. And the same thing, if you have a lower back pain, the reason is not that you have uh, lifted something wrong or, or you did something wrong, but it's uh, just an underlying issue, lacking uh, range of motion or mobility from your hips. So these are things uh, like that if you do those uh, self-tests, like I, I put body in that uh, my mobility guide, there is a seven different tests. So you are testing your neck, you are testing your shoulders, uh, uh, spine, hips, uh, knees, uh, ankles, uh, even toes. So you have your, you go through your whole body, you see where you are failing, where you uh, feel discomfort during the exercise. And those are simple, simple to use. And then when you know that, okay, I'm struggling here, there is, there is my weakest weak point. And uh, then you have a correctional exercise. So when you start to implement those, you start to see actually amazing results because uh, 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 it's it's just you can you know where you need to work. Because that is something like that. If you have no idea where you should be working on, how you can't expect that you are going to going to see some results. And uh, of course, it's helping then later on. Like uh, other option is that. Uh, using those uh, body weight exercises, like doing them with the full range of motion, like let's say that you are doing a bench press uh, or, or shoulder presses or uh, squats, just with a lower weight and really working through that uh, range of motion. So this is also kind of uh, mobility training when you when you are using lower weights and really focusing on uh, improving your form, improving your uh, range of motion so this is the other way like that you can kind of combine these two things on your rest days so this is uh but this is that uh, tip number three and then tip number four is uh it's pretty obvious but i i used to underestimate that so much and that is uh your sleep so sleep is uh of course it's something like that most of us know that it's something what you should probably work on but still especially nowadays i i see that so many people are uh not prioritizing their sleep and then you know you are wondering that uh, why you are kind of uh foggy throughout the day you have a very low energy and then like uh you are of course then you are not you are not recovering it takes a lot longer like especially older you get uh more you have to pay attention for these things and uh, as i was a uh, younger of course there you don't realize it so much but now when you when you get into your 40s or something then you start to realize that uh, that sleep is actually probably the most beneficial thing what you can do for your uh overall health and uh and a recovery so sleep is uh is uh basically for muscle growth uh, overall well-being and uh and a recovery probably the single most beneficial tool what you can use as uh, that affects in so many different ways like for example how is your uh of course energy levels because that is then uh even it's uh, directly you can always survive one two days but if it's uh, anything longer than that it's uh it's you start to uh, feel the difference and of course there are periods uh in your life like especially if you are parent or you have a newborn small children uh it's of course you it's something it's out of your control you can't really control it and then you gotta kind of do the best you can to overcome these struggles but uh, if you have a possibility to prioritize your sleep that is uh, that is uh, going to be a game changer, and this is uh, what most people don't want to hear. Because there is, uh, you know, you I hear so often that uh, you know you are you are not uh, people are not willing to sacrifice their own uh, own time, like especially if you have a children or something, and they go to sleep, and then you know you want to watch uh, Netflix or something, and uh, then it's like that. You know, you don't want to you don't want to you you are okay sleeping five, six hours per night. But uh, trust me, that is uh, that is going to make such a big difference. And it's it's just uh, worth of it to at least to try it. And if you, let's say, you try to improve your sleep for a month, and um, then if you rather watch Netflix or something, and you still, you don't want to 
you don't like the way how it makes you feel, then go back. And if that is more important to have uh, your own time, then go back for it. But uh, try for a month and see what kind of impact it makes. And tips for sleep. Like uh, uh, I recently talked with the with uh, one woman who said that they have uh, huge problems to sleep. Like, of course, there is uh, uh, concerns uh, uh, with her parents' uh, health issues, with her with their uh, children. So, of course, these are all, all stress with the work. So, these are these are all uh, real life uh, examples. What is like that? I totally get it. But uh, uh, one thing, what really helps it is uh, to put it away from your brain brain before you go to sleep so so think it uh, if you go to for example you are going to you are going to put it out somehow before you go to bed so it's uh, it's processed before so for example if you have a sorrows there is a basically two options either you talk about it with someone that it's kind of addressed those issues or then you journal it so writing down like uh, if it's a, if you have some sorrows what what sorrows you have how they make you feel or then either you talk it you put journal it or then you just uh, uh, simply simply trying to somehow get it away from your head or if you are if you have a uh, if work is causing stress you have a million things to do just writing your most what I love to use that I have uh, three most important tasks for the next day. I know them. I know exactly what I'm going to do next day. And then there is like a big list. What is what is like that? What you should be doing, but it's not that important. And then those things, if I get done those most important tasks, and maybe then one, two, those what are also important, but not like that you must do them right away. So when you know you have a clarity that you don't need to bring or think those things or go through those things during the night that is helping. And uh, then other thing, what is what has been a game changer for me is to uh, create that sleep uh, routine and uh, going to bed around same time every single day when it's just possible. Of course, if there is some social events or, or I'm, I'm a ice hockey referee, I might have a late game I have to drive home of course it's not going to be every single day at the same time but if I have just uh, uh, control over when I'm going to bed it's going to be then latest or around 10 o'clock every single day and uh, and uh, that usually I wake up without any alarm latest at six so so that is uh, that is what have really worked for me and um, I can only uh, Tell you that uh, try it, try it. If you don't believe me, what I'm talking, you are you don't want to hear it because often we don't want to hear these things. But uh, but uh, try it, and then you know you can always make uh, decisions. Other thing is like especially for people who are having a trouble to fall asleep. Like I used to have a this problem too but uh, one thing what i learned from my podcast with the uh, sleep doctor selby harris it's uh, uh you can find it from my podcast uh i recently republished that episode because i think that that was so amazing tips what she gave and one of those things is like that often we are focusing on uh, bedtime routine like i uh, think uh, closing electronic devices and uh, starting your bed routine and uh, and going to bed, maybe reading something or drinking some warm tea or that kind of tips, what I'm sure you have heard. But uh, what was really eye-opening for me and what, what really worked was uh, focusing on your morning. And uh, morning, uh, it means that you are basically getting uh, some light early in the day. Like ideally, it's going to be sunlight and now... Uh, we are at least here in Italy. We have we don't have that early that um, sunlight. So even some light uh, with with what is not uh, natural, but uh, with some lit light or or bright light. When you get that uh, light exposure early in the day, it makes you your body awake, and it also like earlier you do it then later on you are going to get tired because then it's a signal also for your body that now it's uh, it's uh, 
time to sleep and time to rest so you are often getting uh, more tired later on and uh, failing to sleep easier so this is uh, this is uh, sleep itself it's uh, it's uh, improved your workouts you are because i'm sure if you have worked out you know the difference if you have a had a good night of sleep or you haven't slept so well uh, what is the difference how much more you can do when you are uh, uh, recovered and when you have had a good night of sleep and of course it uh, affects also uh, it reduces risk risks of uh, injury and uh, and uh, those uh, those kind of things uh, so sleep is probably the single most beneficial thing what you can do and then uh, last but not least uh, strategy for your rest days and this is one of my my thing like that if you if you if you you are dedicating one day of planning for your nutrition and this tip is uh, is such a great uh, tip what i what i think that if you if you think that you have a you have dedicated one hour or whatever for your workout and now often what i see that people you you are getting so much more results if you are just taking that one hour and working out a bit less and taking that hour to plan and prepare your nutrition so when you when you are of course nutrition is uh it's like i'm not going to tell now or talk about like what to eat and when to eat and uh, something but if you what i say that uh, so many people are struggling that uh, you know life is getting busy then you know when you don't have a lot of time to cook you don't have a lot of energy to cook you start to uh, you are eating something what is like uh, quickly available and if you are not if you haven't planned you haven't prepared uh, those choices what you are going to make they are not going to be the most ideal but if you dedicate that one hour like uh, tips what i love to use is that uh, either like you don't need to plan whole week ahead what you are going to eat but for example what uh, what most people are struggling for example getting their vegetables getting their uh protein sources getting their fiber sources so for example for protein sources uh, just uh, uh pre-cooking them so for example if you let's say that you want to you enjoy eating chicken you could be cooking your chicken already on that dedicated hour and then store it in your uh fridge so so then when you know that okay monday i'm going to have a chicken with some pasta then tuesday it's going to be chicken i'm going to make some wraps or or something else so you can use the same protein source in a different ways with different seasoning and uh, then you have already like it's not that you have to eat same foods but uh, when you have planned your protein sources or other strategies like like this way that you look ahead your next day which what are going to be your protein sources for example breakfast if you have similar breakfast uh, i use my example my breakfast is uh, or protein sources for my breakfast is every single day the same i have a scoop protein powder and a 250 grams of greek yogurt so that is that way i know that i'm going to get 50 grams of uh, protein for my breakfast so those are my protein sources for my breakfast then what is going to be my protein source for uh, lunch if it's like let's use again it's a uh, chicken uh, i want to get i to hit my protein goal which is 150 grams i would need to get 30 40 grams and i know that the chicken has around 23 24 grams per 100 grams so i would need to have 150 grams uh around for my to hit my protein goal and then the same thing for dinner whatever is my going to be my source and then how much i need to have it and then this way it's it gets so much easier then you can start to build everything else around that protein source or at least think that uh, if i don't know if it's a kind of decision that i need to i haven't planned it i always tend to think or love to think what is going to be my protein source and if i don't have any or if there's not enough then the first question is always that can i be eating more what i'm already eating and if the answer is that no i feel like that i i can't eat more it's already too much then i'm next question is that what else i could be adding would i be adding some cottage cheese or or uh, whatever i enjoy eating so this is this is uh, planning your nutrition because that is uh, that is uh, that 
that is uh, that helps so much to maintain your energy levels uh, support your muscle repair and uh, it's preventing that uh, temptation of less healthy food sources so if you get your protein if you get your fiber in it's uh, more likely that you are having a, you are feeling fuller you are less tempted to have some sugar cravings and uh, and this is uh, nutrition it's just uh, it plays such a huge part with the recovery and uh, these tips hopefully are helpful and beneficial so uh, i highly recommend to try these things and and dedicate one day of week your workout time work out less and use that time for planning and preparing your nutrition vegetables you could be uh if you cut them wash them uh in a one day you can they, you can store them for the next day so then everything is ready and you just basically need to eat them so these were uh, my top five tips and just uh, quickly going through recap what we talked like tips were number one was walking and staying active number two body weight exercises and working on your form trying to improve going uh, full rates of motion uh, with lighter weights where you don't feel exhausted and uh, avoiding basically all kind of high intensity stuff number three was mobility workouts so going going dedicating either warm-ups you could be combining them with your body weight workouts or or even during the rest time and uh tip number four was sleep improving your sleep making sure that you sleep at least seven hours per night and number five was to plan and uh, take dedicate one hour or one workout less and dedicate it for your nutrition so hopefully these tips were helpful and if they were and you think that somebody else would uh, benefit from this episode, I would love if you share, could share this episode and leave five-star review in iTunes or Spotify. And uh, if there's anything uh, in my balanced lifestyle pr- blueprint, it's my membership coaching program. You have access on everything, on your mo- uh, mobility workouts. You have a, a workouts for either home gym so you know exactly what to do we are group together uh hanging out uh having accountability group so you are actually also doing these things what you know what you are doing and uh, you are not alone if you see that you are going through some uh, busy period of life so that that is a uh, uh i have a seven day free trial so you can try it test it out and if you don't enjoy it if you, if you don't absolutely love it you can cancel it anytime and you can uh, honestly even keep my all mobility guides all my booking books all bonuses what you get and uh and uh there's you have nothing to lose so i put link to show notes and i hope you give a shot try it and uh, if you don't absolutely love it you have nothing to lose so thank you for listening and talk to you soon Hold up, friend. Do you love Fit Me Tour Fitness podcast? If so, the best way to say thank you is to subscribe to the podcast and leave a review on iTunes. I know every podcaster wants you to leave a review, but it's because those reviews help the podcast to reach more people. I truly want to know what you think and if this particle episode resonated with you, would you also please share it? Either send a link to someone who you think will find it valuable or take a screenshot and post it into your social media and tell your friends and family why they should listen it. Make sure you tag me so I can hear your feedback and give you a little love. And you know, if you aren't already following me on Instagram or TikTok, that's the perfect time to hit that follow button. Thank you for being here and listening to Fit Me to a Fitness Podcast.